Thank you so much for speaking to me again. Mm -hmm. We're here at the IMF meetings where everybody's yeah. talking about slower global growth. Yeah. What's the outlook for Japan right now? I think uh, the Japanese economy has also slightly slowed down. Uh, partly because of uh, Japan's exports to China uh, has become somewhat weak. Uh, particularly IT related goods and capital goods. Uh, so because of that, uh, Japan's uh, production uh, also has become weak. However, uh, uh, Bank of Japan's uh, recent uh, business survey showed that uh, corporations are uh, still uh, quite uh, 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 sure that they would uh, make uh, quite uh, robust uh, corporate investment this year. So, yes, uh, exports have become somewhat weak and production has also uh, become somewhat weak, but corporations are still quite uh, sure that they can uh, implement a very robust uh, sort of investment uh, for the whole year. So, uh, that it's is mixed. the case. Yeah, yeah. and uh, also uh, during the discussions uh, here in Washington, D.C., I sensed uh, somehow uh, Chinese economy is likely to recover in the second half, partly because of the huge uh, fiscal stimulus measures the government has already decided, and some of them are already uh, implemented. Mm -hmm. So the first half of the year, the economy may be a bit weak in you China. You see it turning, though. Yeah, but in the second half of the year, economy will uh, recover, uh, accelerate, and uh, uh, for the entire uh, 2019, Chinese economy is likely to grow 6% plus. So, and that'll help Japan. That's right. Yeah. You've been very focused on the inflation yeah, target, yeah. Yeah, prioritize yeah. that yeah, for yeah. the last few yeah. years, but inflation has still remained subdued. Why that's is right. that? Two factors. One. Despite the very uh, good corporate uh, profit levels, and also despite the very uh, strong labor market situation, I mean, unemployment rate is only 2.3%, which is even in Japanese context, uh, full employment. And yet, uh, wages are rising somewhat uh, moderately, modestly. That is one factor. Another factor is, in the last uh, five, six years, labor productivity increase in Japan uh, was the highest among G7 countries. Higher than in the United States, higher than in Germany. So, wage costs certainly rose, but because of uh, labor productivity increase, uh, corporations can manage uh, without raising uh, prices. So, wages are rising, but uh, mo moderately or modestly. Prices are not rising much because of huge labor productivity increase. So, at this stage, uh, headline inflation rate is uh, 1% or slightly less than 1%. And if you exclude energy items, then inflation rate uh, core inflation rate is only about 0 0.4 or 0.5%. What, what do you do about that? You've done everything. Yeah, everything and also as I said, uh, the economy is doing quite well. The corporate sector enjoys a historic high level of profit, better than they enjoyed during the bubble period in late 80s. And the labor market is quite tight, probably the tightest in the last 30, 40 years. So the economy, real economy, is doing quite well. Right. But as I said, uh, wages are not rising so fast as we hope. Uh, so do you feel you have to do I, I, more? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, even so, I think the wages are now rising and uh, accelerating. So by maintaining current uh, extremely accommodative monetary policy, 
uh, labor market continue to be tight and uh, output gap at this stage output gap is not negative it's now even positive so by maintaining extremely accommodative monetary policy uh, maintaining uh, tight labor market uh, I, we are reasonably sure that wages accelerate and prices also. I did see that Amazon is yeah. raising prices in Japan for the first time <laughs> since it's been there. That must be some sort of good sign for you. Did you see so, that? So I think, uh, I mean, particularly uh, in the service sector, uh, restaurants, hotels, uh, uh, they are raising uh, prices because they are quite labor intensive. And labor intensive uh, sectors uh, finally raising prices. So uh, it takes uh, more time than we thought before because we introduced the current uh, extremely accommodative monetary policy in April 2013. Six Already years. six years. And yet, uh, of course, when we introduced that uh, monetary policy, uh, inflation rate was minus 0.5. It's now 1%. So it's worked? Yeah. It also, we have to be patient. Yeah. I mean, it, it raises the question, though, yeah. that if, if we do, global economy, yeah. face a steeper decline yeah. or downturn yeah. or yeah. even recession, uh -huh. whether central banks, especially yours, yeah. has the policy ammunition to yeah. fight it. Yeah, of course, uh, since uh, our policy rate is minus 0.1 percent and the 10-year JGB rate is around 0 percent but still we can further reduce interest rate. How negative can you go? Uh, I mean Japan's uh, negative interest rate is just minus 0.1 percent and as you may know in Europe they have minus 0.5 percent or minus 0.75 percent or some I, I'm not saying that we, we would do that, but right. uh, still there are room for reducing long-term interest rate as well as short-term interest rate. And also there are other ways to make monetary conditions uh, more accommodative expansionary through larger asset sales, asset purchase program. Mm -hmm and so on and so forth. So I think uh, there are still some room for uh, further uh, monetary easing. If you need. Yeah, if needed. But at this stage, we don't think it's necessary. Do you, do you worry at all about the longer term implications and the mm. side effects of ah. having so much yeah. accommodation yeah. for so long? I think a major uh, <coughs> side effect is uh, its impact on the profitability of the banking sector because uh, banks can make uh, profit uh, through the interest rate gap. It's crushing that. Yeah, it's almost uh, almost uh, nothing. Right. But in the last five years or so, Japanese banks recorded uh, relatively respectable level of profit. Why? Big banks uh, uh, increase the international lending. Uh, local banks, they cannot increase international lending so that their uh, profit or income coming from lending uh, business declined. But two factors compensate. One, sharply declined credit cost because uh, now bankruptcy is so uh, rare. Yeah. So credit cost has declined. That is one part. Another is uh, local banks sold a uh, lot of uh, JGBs uh, to Bank of Japan. Yeah. <laughs> and also they sold uh, some stock and shares with significant capital gain. So because of these two factors, uh, they can maintain relatively good uh, profit level, but these two factors cannot be continued indefinitely because
credit cost is already quite low. Uh, could, uh, could rise credit cost. Mm -hmm. And also, they have sold a lot of uh, JGBs as well as socks and chairs. And uh, so that uh, this uh, way of uh, uh, making profit uh, is limited. So, in the long run, I mean, uh, for the last five, six years, they maintain. But in the long run, uh, local banks uh, would have to make some restructuring or uh, acquisition and mergers and some uh, new business. Uh, to deal so, with it. That's right. But so far, mm -hmm. it's okay. And uh, even local banks have enough capital so that uh, even if their uh, profit become negative, they can sustain for uh, several years. But as I said, eventually they have to make such sort of restructure. Are you surprised no? at the value of the dollar yen given mm -hmm. how much easing you've done relative to mm -hmm. the Fed's normalization mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and where the 10-year yield is yeah, versus yeah. the U.S. 10-year yield? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Japanese yen hasn't weakened that substantially. Uh, I, I must say that uh, the, 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 the before we introduced uh, the, the quantitative and qualitative monetary easing in uh, 2013, yen was, uh, was uh, overvalued. And uh, in the last five, six years, yen has stabilized around uh, 110 uh, to 120 or something which is not uh, undervaluation. Uh, rather, I should say, excessive uh, uh, appreciation or overvaluation was corrected. And uh, the exchange rate has been uh, quite stable now, uh, despite... Uh, so you're satisfied? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and also, as you know, uh, exchange rates are affected by many factors, not just uh, bilateral interest rate differential, but many factors. Yes, when the trade war gets yeah. worse, <laughs> the, I mean, it, it affects yeah. the dollar yen. Uh, at this stage, as you know, uh, trade conflict is between US and China. And I hope uh, uh, trade uh, conflict be uh, solved. Uh, relatively soon, I hope. I don't know. How much do you think it's hurting the global economy? Uh, I think uh, already uh, because of this uncertainty, uh, investment in China uh, has been affected. And so uh, if uh, this conflict is solved soon, that will be good for uh, the Chinese economy and also for the U.S. economy, yeah. But this is uh, outside of the central banking. <laughs> but it's affecting the outlook. I mean, yeah. actually, Japan is, is going to yeah. start trade talks with the U.S. next week. Yeah. Do you see this as a potential risk factor if our administration pursues the uh, path of tariffs or tariff uh, threats? I, 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 I mean, personally, I don't think so. But, uh, of course, this is uh, up to uh, trade negotiators. <laughs> so I don't know. But have, have you looked at a scenario <laughs> mm. where if the U.S. put tariffs on mm. Japanese car mm. exports to the United States, mm. what would that do to the Japanese economy? As, as you know, uh, already uh, most of uh, Japanese cars sold in the United States are produced in the United States. Uh, so uh, I really don't think uh, uh, it's necessary. Uh, for the U.S. to impose tariffs on Japanese car import. And many of them may be uh, components for automobiles produced in the United States. And uh, by the way, uh, the <coughs> uh, within the uh, U.S. Uh, trade deficit, Years ago, 20 years ago, a uh, large part of U.S. trade deficit was with the 
with, with Japan. Yeah. But now it's quite small. 60 so, billion. The president still wants to eliminate it. <laughs> Is that possible? I, I'm not quite sure because uh, bilateral trade uh, uh, is not uh, a very important uh, uh, economic uh, indicator. I mean, global uh, current account sure. will be quite important, but it should be global, multilateral, and not only uh, trade balance, but service trade balance, income. Uh, account balance and so on and so forth. So, I think uh, for any economy, the important uh, uh, variable is not bilateral trade uh, figure, but global current account figure. And uh, the, uh, from this point of view, I think uh, US has been uh, managing its economy quite well. Of course, uh, some uh, current account uh, deficit, but quite manageable. And this shows that the U.S. Uh, is importing capital. And uh, many of them are FDIs, so that uh, Japanese companies, European companies, uh, come to the U.S. Uh, doing business, creating jobs uh, uh, hugely in the United States. Yeah. So, I, I I think from this uh, perspective, as you know, the, the G20 under the Japanese presidency will discuss global imbalances, mm -hmm. how to avoid excessive global imbalances, not by bilateral trade balance. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's good that you're taking over the conversation, <laughs> yeah. I guess, this year. So when yeah. you look globally, yeah. I mean, risk assets have performed very well yeah. in, in 2019. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. been risk on, that's yeah, helped yeah, the yeah. dollar yen, yeah, that's yeah. helped a, a lot mm. in terms of the economic outlook as well. Do you expect that kind of environment to continue? Uh, it's, uh, it's uh, I mean, according to the World Economic Outlook, uh, recently released by the IMF, they also think that uh, this year, growth rate would decelerate. Because uh, last year growth rate was uh, world global uh, economy uh, growth rate was 3.6 percent, but this year they expect 3.3 percent. But next year it would uh, accelerate to uh, 3.6 percent, and this is the main uh, scenario. And it is most likely uh, if this is uh, realized, I don't think there. Are would be any uh, financial market turmoil or anything like that. But this uh, mainline scenario uh, is mainline scenario. What's the there are a lot of, a lot of uh, downside risks. What's the biggest risk to the global economy? At this stage, I must say that, uh, that uh, uh, trade uh, protection, not only uh, between U.S. And, and China, there are some sort of uh, protectionism. That is, I think, the most uh, uh, serious risk uh, involved in the global economy. But, as I said, uh, I hope uh, uh, U.S.-China trade conflict would be resolved soon. Uh, by the way, uh, IMF uh, World Economic Outlook main scenario uh, does uh, assume uh, U.S.-China trade conflict would not uh, uh, worsen, would not uh, become so serious. If uh, it worsens and becomes more serious, it's then a different outlook. that's right. Governor Grota, thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate you speaking thank to you. me.